Your favorite man met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he was asked to rather point to question about whether some of the xenophobic tone coming from his administration was leading to the rise of anti-Semitism. And this was that man's response. Take a look. <laughs> we are, you know, very honored by the victory that we had, 306 electoral college votes. Uh, we were not supposed to crack 220. You know that, right? There was no way to 221, but then they said there's no way to 270. As far as uh, people, Jewish people, so many friends, a daughter who happens to be here right now, a son-in-law, and three beautiful grandchildren, uh, I think that you're going to see a lot different United States of America over the next three, four, or eight years. Hey, God help us. So just because his family is Jewish, that means anti-Semitism will disappear? I don't know. He didn't I mean, ask like, like a certifiable that he, He's like certifiable. Like yeah. it was such a crazy, crazy, cra it was like this crazy response. I was like, audience, the I, Prime Minister is standing right here. Right here. I just, I actually didn't like he understand. Can't say the word Jew. It's like, a, it's like a. But he didn't even answer. He didn't answer the question about anti-Semitism. It's, it's a very, it was a very easy question to answer. I mean, you can answer that in 140 characters right. on Twitter. Just say but I have zero answer. tolerance for anti-Semitism, and my administration will follow protocol to make sure that yeah. that doesn't happen. Did you think Netanyahu was thinking, what a moronic Gentile this is? <laughs> Netanyahu deals with it. He turns to him and he goes, did you know that they didn't think I'd make it? I'm like, that guy has better things to do with his life than worry about your electoral It's, it's an embarrassment. It was, that was an embarrassment. It's so humiliating to be represented by this guy. For me, though, like, that's how he won the election. He's still in campaign mode. To me, that sounded like a guy trying no, to win an election. No, it's on a fifth grade level. That's how he but won the election. No, yeah. this is how he won. <laughs> he pivots. That's what you do. You know, when you're in a campaign, you pivot. Somebody asks you a question, you don't know the answer, you don't know what to say, you pivot. But that's, that's, not, that's not what way, a president yeah, does. Though. A president has votes. The well, By the way, he did Brandon win. the question. He would have had an Brandon answer. Brandon would have had an answer. That's, that's why, to me, he's the real press. He would have had an answer. Yeah. yeah. That's true. It's yeah. Bizarre. No, it is Just saying. <laughs> it was bizarre. It was but he bizarre. also would have had to admit that his rhetoric has increased the anti-Semitism in the country. That. And, that, and that's why he didn't answer that question, because so the question was, do you think that right. some of what your rhetoric has done is put this anti, name it, gay people, well, Jewish people, everything, do you think you're responsible right. for some of that? But them? the fact that he doesn't disavow the Ku Klux Klan tells you right there well, he how did. he we is approaching this topic. Yeah. You no, know he doesn't. He last last week. Week. Why, oh, what did he say? Last week. He did find it. He was like, like, like David Duke. Duke. Yeah, Who's David yeah, Duke? I I don't actually, I don't actually think, and I think I've spoken with Jen about this, I don't actually think he is anti-Semitic. The problem here is all of his rhetoric, which we have not heard him speak about, he will not come out ever. And it doesn't need to be an apology, which he says, I think there's a psychology of refusing that, you know. All, you need all he has to say is, I truly am here for all of you. All, like you, one need statement. To, for he won't all you need for evil to flourish is for good men to be silent. Yes. And that's what he is. Yeah. A bad, a, maybe a good guy. Not speaking. Well, so maybe we should send that on some sweatshirts to Congress and the Senate. Right. Because all they of the folks in that. charge, mm -hmm. all of you guys who worked so hard to get your foot forward, all you nice Republicans, this is on you. This is on your watch. First, it was the you-know-who brand that was facing a ban and a boycott. And now it's members of his team. MSNBC's Morning Joe says that they will no longer book Trump spokeswoman Kellyanne Conway. Well, I, tell you I should. I was well. I'm, yeah, go ahead. Should the media be banning or silencing these people? Or are they suppressing free speech? Or is there such a thing anymore? Well, uh, Mika Brzezinski's reasoning. Mm -hmm. I quote her: Every time I've seen her on television, something's askew, off, or incorrect. And yet they bring Sean Spicer there who also is incorrect askew. Uh, so Trump goes on there, he's also incorrect askew. Why they pick on Kellyanne? Well, she's, I, she's not any worse than the rest of them. I think they feel like she's not a good representative of the administration, and I think that, that, that's what I think that The administration isn't a good representative. <laughs> that's true. That may be true. I mean, I, I'm 
surprised <laughs> nobody grabs Steve. To be honest, you know, I'm that is not I, brought on yet. But I honest, submit to yeah, that that said. Kellyanne is the reason that he won. Because two yeah. weeks before for the election, she said to him, act presidential and fool everybody. And yeah. that's what he did. Hey. She, she certainly normalized him. But, you yes. know, I'm always troubled by not having a seat at the table. Like, I, I struggle with this because if you don't have a seat at the table, you can't pick the menu. You can't pick what you're eating. And so if, if you're not going to meet with the president, if you're not going to have a dialogue with Kellyanne Conway, then you're in the dark. Like, I, I just yeah, don't I know don't what's the, what the right thing to do. My, my take on it, she's not at the table. Right. They're, they're saying that they're not bringing her in because they don't feel she's in these meetings. She's his she's, special advisor. She's making a lot Why of mistakes, Why would you not though? sit with her? Well, right before Michael Finn, sorry, no, no. right before Michael Flynn resigned, an hour before, she came on the air saying he has the full support of the president. Right. That was right. an hour Which before he Which is probably he what he told her. Yeah, but, sure. I, but I think that's the, the problem hour later, is he not, changed his mind. I, I, I think just, they're saying, though, they're not going to have a representative from the administration. I think they're saying maybe this isn't the best person to have on because she's been proven to not be credible in her reporting. So why are we interviewing someone that's making these mistakes and not giving us reporting. accurate she information? She is representing the president. And I think, like what well, he said, it is, it is probably likely that he tells her these things. And she, she is in his inner it's, circle. You know what's funny about this is whenever we hear here, folks who come out and speak for the administration, be it Condoleezza Rice or, or Colin Powell or uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton, you know, folks always are like, hey, well, uh, you know, you said it was this. You said it was that. Mm -hmm. So we hold people to a very high standard when they are just giving you the information that they are getting. And banning her or banning anyone, I, in a way, I agree with you. But what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, you see these, you see Sean Spicer talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. But he only speaks to Breitbart, as I said earlier, Breitbart and, yeah. and Fox News. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder yeah. why we continue mm. to give them the space yeah. to do stuff like well, that. Well, something interesting happened uh, this week because Bill Maher had booked a Breitbart editor, right. uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, very controversial right-wing guy. And right. Jeremy Scahill, who's the co-founder of The Intercept, was booked on that show mm -hmm. and basically came out and said, I'm declining. I'm not coming because I believe that it's, it's inappropriate, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. that you're giving a platform to this guy. Mm -hmm. And Bill Maher responded and disagreed and defended his decision and mm -hmm. said, if Mr. Yiannopoulos is indeed the monster Scahill claims, and he might be, nothing could serve the liberal cause better than having him exposed right. on Friday and night. Have, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Right. Yeah. I agree 100%. I remember um, um, Steve Harvey, who, who, I, who I know, Steve Harvey met with President Trump. Huge mm -hmm. backlash. Huge yeah. backlash for it. And his response was, you can't, you need to have a seat at the table. And I, I just, I, I, I think there's something to that open dialogue. Well, so, Bill Maher is an entertainer, and he knows conflict really He's bring, also brings, in, bring, brings in eyeballs. And believe me, he will eviscerate this Yiannopoulos. He is so brilliant, Bill Maher, and this guy's an idiot. That's how you change, that's how you change minds, though. When I took this job, I remember when I took this job, I got so much heat from Fox News people, from right-wing people, saying, you're going to go, you're going to be talking to, you know, that's liberal media, you're going to be talking to a liberal audience. And I said, you know what? If I have the power at this table to convince one person who's watching it or change one heart or mine, or have show people that you can have a conversation, then, then I've done my job. And that's what people Listen, need to this do. This show has been doing that we for 20 that. years. That yeah. show, this show has been doing that for 20 years. And, you know, folks at Fox, you know, when you only have one... One thing that you talk about, we talk about everything. We do. Yeah. We talk about everything, everybody, and we try to be fair. We get heated sometimes. We're never nasty to each other. We do our jobs because we actually do a little bit of our homework, you know, unlike a lot of folks <laughs> on Fox, you know? I'm just saying, I watch y'all too.